Hello, welcome to my drugstore makeup collection. For today's video, I wanna walk you through everything that I own currently from the drugstore, share reviews, comparisons, any dupes that I might have in here. I wanna walk you through everything. Of course, I'm gonna leave timestamps for every section. This video is probably gonna get pretty long, but starting off, I wanna share foundations and primers. So I have primers in this top row. I did also include eyeshadow primers so we can talk through those, but my first and like one of my favorites from the drugstore is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. This is definitely one of the most like popular drugstore primers. This is a very sticky formulation. That sound effect was probably a little gross, but this, if you've seen like the commercials with this, it actually genuinely does like get sticky. I know in the commercials, they'll show things like stuck to your face. It really does grip on. I find that this actually extends the wear of my products. I see a really big difference when I use this. I would definitely recommend this one. One of my favorites for hydration is this one from Essence. This is their Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer. This is a pretty close dupe to the Glow Recipe Dew Drops. I use this more so as a primer and I use the Dew Drops kind of like skincare slash primer. So this does have a scent to it just like the Dew Drops, but this gives you this really like almost plush, hydrated, glowy base. I like wearing this under foundation. I just find that the foundation sits a lot better when I wear this. Another super hyped up one is the e.l.f. Liquid Filter. This is their Halo Glow. I have the shade Too Fair Light, and I do think this is a pretty close dupe to the Charlotte Tilbury Primer. I really like the large doe foot that this has. I will say the shade two is actually a little bit deeper than I would have expected. So I don't find myself wearing this as much as I thought I would because this shade is a little bit too dark for me. So maybe if I had the lighter one, funny enough, I also have shade two in the Charlotte Tilbury one and it is significantly lighter than this. But I do think this blends out like really beautifully, it gives this like luminous glow to the skin. I think foundation sits really well over top of it definitely a high recommendation next this one is looking pretty dirty but i think that shows how frequently i use this this is the hard candy sheer envy hydrating primer this i would say kind of similar to the elf power grip but minus most of the stick like it has that similar gel like texture and I do think this extends the wear of my makeup, but not necessarily the same way that the Power Grip does. I would say this is kind of like a similar formula, but more on the hydrating side. Another one from e.l.f., we have the Poreless Putty Primer. This is another super popular one from them. Uh, this one I don't use as much, but I do feel like it makes a nice difference when I do use it. I've learned that you really just need a tiny bit, like that was way more than you would need. I just take a little bit and kind of like push it into any areas that you have really noticeable pores and I find that it makes a really big difference for smoothing. But this one I don't think does as much as some of the other ones. Like this I would only recommend if like pores are a very big concern for you. Two eyeshadow primers to talk about. I have the Milani eyeshadow primer and the Ulta Beauty matte eyeshadow primer. The Milani one, I would say, is very similar to the Urban Decay Primer Potion. You know, it applied just now with a bit of a tint, but I find that like once you blend it out onto the eyes, it's pretty much sheer. Whereas this one from Ulta, you can see has a lot more pigment. So this, I think, makes a better base if you're looking to apply a lot of color over top of it. It kind of uh, cancels out any veins or anything on the eyes, but I find them both like equally effective for gripping shadows to the lid, but I think the Milani one is a little more hydrating, whereas the Ulta one can be a little matte. Okay, foundation. I will leave a video linked down below. It's a kind of older video, but I talked about my best and worst foundations at the drugstore. And this pile only includes ones that I have right now, so not anything I've decluttered, obviously, not anything I've used up, of course but I will have that linked down below if you wanna hear even more thoughts on different foundations. Starting off with the Undone Matte, the Unfoundation Tint. So the shade that I have in this is pretty weird. It is called Petal Pink Light. I guess it's not weird. What I mean is it's a pretty bad shade match for me because it's very cool toned and like very, very pink. This has a pretty light level of coverage, 
when i am using this on dry skin it looks really bad so i would say this is a recommendation if you have oily skin or if your skin is dry but like well prepped if you have any dry patches this clings really bad this one is pretty new to me i have used it one time at the time that i'm filming this so i can't give too many thoughts but it's the ulta beauty complexion crush this one i have in the shade fair neutral and it is like a perfect shade oops sorry it's like a perfect shade match for me and i don't know that it's as noticeable on the hands because you know my hands aren't quite the same color as my face and neck but this is a really wonderful shade match for me this has a medium level of coverage like the name would imply but i don't think it looks too heavy initially but the one time that i wore it it really clung to my dry patches that could have just been my skin that day acting a little extra dry but I didn't like it after wearing it for a little bit like it initially applied beautifully but I didn't really like the way that it wore but I will update you on that those are really just like first thoughts okay the lip bar this is called just a tint it is the three-in-one skin conditioner this does have SPF 11 to it which obviously I wouldn't rely on just that but it is a nice extra oh did I break this oh man okay I was going to show you but it looks like this is broken actually the cap um it has like a squeeze tip applicator and it looks like it got stuck in there and just broke off but let me still share the swatch for you so you can see this is like a very thin consistency this also is actually the lightest shade that they have and it's still like very dark i mean not very dark but it wouldn't really work on a fair skin tone and ironically the shade is named my fair lady so you can find a shade in this that works for you i think it's a really great formula but the if you are fair i wouldn't recommend it this is very dewy light coverage like it's very much your typical skin tint i did enjoy it i'm actually sad that this just broke because i there's gonna be no way for me to keep this because i it's gonna go bad so that's a bummer next we have one of my favorites for a little bit of a higher coverage level this is the catrice true skin this one the shade name came off of this and i i'm so sorry i don't know what shade i have in this i do know though it probably wouldn't help you either way because it is too dark for me so normally when i wear this i'm mixing it with this which we'll talk about in a moment but this is one of my favorite foundations both drugstore or high-end i think the true skin line is just phenomenal it looks so natural even though it is like a higher level of coverage yes it definitely looks more makeup-y than some of these skin tints but i think for the amount of coverage and like perfecting that it provides it doesn't look too makeup-y so this is a mixer from la girl they have a bunch of different shades of these i picked out the white one just because a lot of my foundations tend to be too dark um the pump on this is broken so it doesn't work so i tend to just like open it like this and kind of scoop some out which is maybe not the most sanitary but it's either that or replace the pump so i do like this but i find that it makes my foundation quite a bit more matte so that is something to keep in mind they also have a different type of uh, pigment that i've heard is less mattifying so i would like to try that at some point but i do enjoy using that the nyx bear with me blur okay i have the shade vanilla which is actually a really great shade match for me. Um, again, I don't know that it's gonna be as apparent on my hand, but on my face, it's a wonderful match. Maybe like slightly yellow, but I, I think it looks pretty close. This formula, I would only recommend for someone with oily skin. This, if my skin is not well prepped, it looks incredibly dry. It can flake, it can separate. It is very smoothing and I think the blur in the name is like incredibly appropriate, but I only recommend this if you have oily skin, really. One that is much better for dry skin is this one, the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Foundation. This does like really separate, so you need to shake it up like every time. I have the shade Warm Beige L4 and you're going to see here, it's not quite my perfect shade match. Like it looks a little bit too deep, but because it's such a sheer, level of coverage like i am able to get away with like a few different shades of this so even though it's not my perfect match it tends to blend into the skin pretty seamlessly and you can see the formulation compared to these other ones is significantly more liquidy it's very dewy it doesn't last as long but i would say it's like right on par with most skin tints you know you typically don't expect a ton of longevity from them but it wears really beautifully this one i think is super underrated this is by um 
look at me, I have like, I'm getting foundation on everything. My hands are covered in foundation, but this is Oma by Sharon C. I want to say I've heard this might be going out of business, but this was the drugstore sister brand to Oma Beauty. Now for reference, I also have the Oma Beauty foundation that comes in almost the same packaging. I don't find them to be dupes. I know a lot of people wondered if it was like the same formula. I, I really don't think they are. The texture of both looks a little bit different. This one is slightly more matte, uh, slightly thicker even. This also is a pretty good shade match for me. It's slightly light, but I find like I can make it work with bronzer. The shade is called Fair Lady T1. Funny enough, on my hand, I think it looks like my best shade match, but on my face, it can be a little bit light. For my favorites, my favorite for a light coverage option is gonna be the flower Get Real. And my favorite for a little bit more coverage is going to be the Catrice True Skin. Okay, now for concealers. I don't have too many from the drugstore at the moment, but I will leave a video linked down below from last year where I walked through pretty much every drugstore concealer I've tried. But let's start out with the NYX Born to Glow. This is actually being discontinued, so you might not be able to find this anymore, but I do really enjoy this formulation. I have mine in the shade vanilla you have a sponge applicator to it i think this has a like medium buildable level of coverage to it you can definitely like adapt it depending on how much you apply it has a slightly more radiant finish without being like too glowy i think it looks very natural if you can still get your hands on this i think it is a really wonderful drugstore concealer but Unfortunately, they are discontinuing this. The other one I have from NYX is probably their most popular. This is the Bear With Me Serum Concealer. I like this one, but I don't love it as much as everyone else seems to. I also have this in the shade Vanilla. What I don't love about this as much is the applicator or even just like the packaging of it. So you do have a pump instead of a doe foot. So you may or may not enjoy that, but I, I find that it just makes it a little bit harder for me to use because you do have to pump it out. But this one I would say is kind of similar to the Born to Glow, but a slightly different consistency, a little bit more serum-like as the name would suggest. It definitely feels lightweight. It's like on the thinner side without being liquidy or watery. It is not bad, but I actually like this one even more. This is one of my newer concealers from the drugstore. This is the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. So the old concealer from Flower Beauty, I did not like at all, but I find this formulation to be so much better. So this one, ironically, I also have in the shade Vanilla. I originally had the shade Fair, but it leaned very peach. In general, most of the products or the shades from this line are kind of strange. Like I don't think the shade range makes a lot of sense, but I do really enjoy the formula. Now, this one has a pretty unique shape for the doe foot. It kind of comes to like a little ball tip at the end, so I find it pretty effective at picking up product and giving you a little bit more um, precision with the application. This is pretty high pigment. Without being thick or applying cakey, I find it kind of similar to the new Natasha Denona concealer that I'm really loving so much. Um, this is one of my favorites at the drugstore. My other favorite is the Catrice True Skin. I don't have it at the moment because I did use it up, but I would highly recommend either one of those. Those would be like my top picks for drugstore concealer. If you want a more light coverage option, I do have these from e.l.f. This is the Flawless Finish Concealer. The shade range on this is a little bit lacking, but I actually mix two. I have 15 Fair W, and then light 26N. So these have like a click pen applicator. This is very much inspired by like the YSL, y, what am I saying? YSL Touche Claw. I think you can kind of already see against these other concealers, the difference in coverage level here. Like you can still see a lot of the skin here. It's definitely more lightweight. Surprisingly, this I find to have a pretty matte finish to it. These are the two shades next to one another. This is Light 26N and Fair 15W. You can see there's a pretty big jump between the two of these, but because the coverage level is so light, I find like once you blend this onto the skin, it blends out pretty evenly because there's not like too, too much pigment there. But you can see these actually look a lot more matte on the skin than many of the other ones. Like the flower one is pretty glowy. So is the serum concealer, but these two, the, the flawless ones are actually quite matte. Now, these are color correctors from e.l.f. They also have these in a few additional shades. There is a deeper peach, there is a yellow, 
and I really, really, really enjoy these. These retail for $4 a piece. And it's interesting too, because the other concealers in the camo line, the original camo and the hydrating, I did not really like that much. They're okay. I don't have them in my collection at the moment, but these color correctors, I really enjoy. So first we have the green one. This one is nice for acne. I like to take a little bit of it if I have like a really prominent acne scar that's just looking really red. I'll take a tiny, tiny bit of that on a brush and then, you know, obviously apply my other complexion products over top. And I think it's really effective at minimizing the tone. This salmon option, um, kind of like salmon -y peach. And this blue I find incredibly handy as a foundation mixer. So if I have anything that's pulling too yellow, I like putting a dot of this in and you can kind of adjust the undertone of it just with a little bit of this. Now for powders. Got a mixture of powder foundations and just like regular powders here. Let's start off with the two powder foundations though. So I have the e.l.f. Camo CC Powder Foundation and the Essence 16 Hour Cover and Last. I have the e.l.f. in the shade 140 Fair W and it is such a yellow undertone. Like this is very, very warm. I, I think even on a warm undertone, like this pulls incredibly yellow. And I have the Essence one in the shade Bright Beige. You can see the difference in the undertones. The Essence one looks much more like peachy. Now the e.l.f. option offers more coverage, but I think that the Essence one looks a bit better on the skin. I really enjoy this one for a buildable powder foundation. I have also tried the Ulta Beauty powder foundation from their in-house collection that's also in a pan. That would probably be my number one powder foundation recommendation from the drugstore. One that I would skip is the one from JCAT. I know that one is super popular, but I could not get that to lay correctly on my skin. It would like always separate and just do the weirdest things. Between these two though, my recommendation would be the Essence one. I find that even though I enjoy the e.l.f. one, it can look a bit heavy. Like something about this appears kind of thick on the skin. So it's not my favorite, but I, I don't mind it. Okay, so two from NYX. I did just post a best and worst of NYX. So I can leave that link down below if you want to hear more thoughts. But we have the HD finishing powder and the can't stop, won't stop powder. Out of these two, I prefer the can't stop, won't stop. It is described as a mattifying formula, but I don't find it to be too heavy or cakey or dry on my dry skin. The HD powder foundation I have in the banana shade and I have the can't stop, won't stop in the shade light. Now, the reason this one looks a bit funky is because it broke, so I repressed it. So it looks a bit different in the pan, but I like this one a bit more. I find it much more perfecting. Something about the HD one just never looks amazing on my skin. I don't think it's a terrible powder, but I don't think it does me any favors. I think it can look a little bit too flat for my preference. I like my powder to be mattifying and perfecting, but not to look super powdery. So out of these two, I would recommend the Can't Stop Won't Stop. My number one powder recommendation from the drugstore is always going to be the e.l.f. Halo Glow. I have mine in the shade light pink. This is definitely not like a pink powder. I know pink powders are really trendy right now. That's not what I would describe this as. It just has a pink undertone to it. But if you were wanting to kind of participate in the pink powder trend in a very subtle way, I think this could be a nice option. This formula is very, very like finely milled, buttery, incredibly smooth on the skin. I think it's super perfecting. I would compare it to the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil in terms of the finish and just like the velvet texture it provides on the skin. This is one of the best at the drugstore. The packaging is different now. I have it, I've had it for a while, so it has, I have the black lid on it. Also, I have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh, and then I have the powder from the Lip Bar, but let's talk about ColourPop Pretty Fresh. This one definitely is like a bigger, bulkier package, but I have mine in the shade Fair 2. It comes with this sponge that I don't really use. I actually really like this as a pretty lightweight powder. I find that, again, this looks 
pretty perfected on the skin without feeling too powdery. If I had to compare it to something, I would say it's similar to the Bite Beauty Change Maker powder. I know Bite Beauty is not a brand anymore, but in terms of the, the silky texture that it has and the way that it sits on the skin, I would say it's rather comparable to that one. And this also has a great shade range. Not a ton of powders come in a wonderful range of shades, which they should, but they don't. But I think ColourPop did a better job than most brands of offering a lot of different options in this. And then we have this one from the Lip Bar. This is the shade Baby Buttercup. I really like this one. It's definitely the most expensive out of everything mentioned here, but I do enjoy it. It does look a little bit more matte. It doesn't feel as like velvety in the pan as the other ones, but I still find it gives me this really perfected finish without looking too cakey or powdery. I definitely would recommend this. I know this brand is a little bit harder to find, but they are available at most Target stores, like in stores or online. Okay, we'll do bronzers and highlights together because surprisingly, I don't have very many in either of these categories at the moment. But I, again, I will leave linked down below a video where I talked about the best and worst bronzers at the drugstore. I will leave any corresponding videos like that linked down below if you want to see. I have like best and worst blush, bronzers, lip oils. So I will have everything linked for your convenience. But this is all I have at the moment for liquid and cream and powder blushes or no, excuse me, bronzers and highlights, which is honestly just nuts to me. But first, let's talk about the e.l.f. Primer Infused Bronzer. I do enjoy this one. You can tell I have hit pan on this. This used to be one of my favorites at the drugstore. I actually prefer the Milani Silky Matte a little bit over this, but I think for the price point, this is a really wonderful option. I have the shade Forever Sun Kissed. This also has a really nice like smooth consistency to it. I find it to blend out well. The formula of it actually reminds me a lot of the Balm Take Home the Bronze Bronzer. I wouldn't call it a dupe because those definitely lean more neutral to cool toned, whereas this has a little bit more warmth, but I would say in terms of formulation, I find them pretty similar. I do also have a more glowy option from Flower Beauty. This is their Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. This is a nice baked product, similar to like the Milani highlight there, excuse me, the Milani baked bronzer. I would say this is like a better formulation than that one. This one doesn't pull as glowy and like sparkly. Like you still have a beautiful glow to it, but it doesn't look glittery or too highlighter-esque on the cheeks. Now, this only comes in two shades, which I think is kind of silly, but they, I have the shade Sun Swept. So it has a lot of really beautiful warmth to it. I like it in the summer, both on my face, but also on my chest or like my shoulders, if I wanna add a little bit of a glow. I also have my number one favorite, which is the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Light. This is just such an incredible formulation. It's pretty high pigment. You can see just right away from that swatch, but it shears out really beautifully if you wanted something a little bit less saturated. I find that it blends out really well while also maintaining its integrity. Sometimes really highly pigmented creams like this are challenging to blend out because as you start to shear them out, they can look a little bit patchy or they move around. I find this formulation is so incredibly easy to work with, like one of my highest recommendations. I think it is such a phenomenal cream bronzer. I reach for this over all of my high-end ones, like it's such a good formula. I do also have another one of the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealers in a slightly deeper shade, which is 58N, which I use sometimes as a cream contour. Now I'm using contour loosely because really it's a cream bronzer. Like you can see how much warmth this has, but I do like this for that option because it shears out really beautifully. You know, it's not too pigmented, so I find that it blends out pretty well if you're looking to use it for that instead. Now for highlights, I have two creams at the moment and one liquid. Funny enough, I did actually just order a new highlight from the drugstore. I'm planning to do, actually it might be up before this video actually, I'm planning to do a testing new drugstore makeup and I also ordered another cream bronzer. So if that one is already up, I can leave it linked if you wanna hear my thoughts on like the new ones I just picked up. But these two, this one is actually, again, discontinued, but if you can still get your hands on it and find it, I think it's a really good formula. This is from NYX, it's their high glass highlighter. This has like a really beautiful glow to it. 
you know you can see a tiny bit of sparkle but i think it just looks really wet and dewy and reflective on the cheeks it's a really pretty formula it is more of that like cream to powder texture this one i like even more this is the day glow from flower beauty this is such like a summery balmy product this one doesn't have as much pigment to it you can see the base is a little bit more sheer so because of that i could see it working on a lot of different skin tones because it's not necessarily like tinted it more so just provides that glow now they do have this in multiple shades so there are like deeper options but i feel like this would be a lot more adaptable than most highlights because the base is so minimal this one i wanted to like more than i do but this is the milani liquid highlight in the shade 01 i find that this kind of just looks pretty sparkly on the cheeks it's not horrible but it's not my favorite. Actually, it reminds me, I forgot I have one more I need to grab, but this you can see it also has a bit more of that sheer base to it. So I find it easy to use, it looks nice, but it's not my favorite formula. It kind of, in the weirdest way, looks matte on the skin while having a glow, if that makes any sense. Like it doesn't give you the glow that looks natural or lit from within. I think it just looks a little bit more artificial than a lot of my other favorite highlights. Okay, the one I almost forgot, and how could I? This is my favorite. This is the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter. I have mine in the shade Opal, and this of course is kind of intended to dupe the Charlotte Tilbury Highlighter Formula. Mine is a little bit messy. I do think it can get kind of messy, but I also think my Charlotte Tilbury one can as well. Now this I wanna swatch next to the Milani so you can kind of see the difference here like this i think just looks a lot more radiant whereas the milani do you see what i mean where it's like matte with shimmer it's not actually matte but it doesn't look glowy it looks very flat like a flat highlight whereas this one is a lot more dewy it looks more luminous there's also a big difference in the tones the milani one is incredibly gold whereas the flower one has more of that like champagne almost peachy quality to it i think the difference is especially apparent as i like move my hand around let me turn down the lights here they are in kind of a lower light so we can see them next to each other i think the flower one just reflects light so much better than the milani one yeah i would recommend this one much more okay so the blush section is a little bit bigger here you can tell i'm a huge blush lover let's start with the powders and then move our way into the liquids i did also do best and worst blushes so i can leave that link down below if you want a full in-depth video about these but let's talk through the ones that i have so out of this entire bunch if i had to choose my least favorite it would actually be this one which i used to really enjoy this formula and i still don't think it's bad like i wouldn't not recommend it but i think there are better options on this table this is from covergirl this is their cheekers blush formula this has been around pretty much forever i have mine in the shade pink candy if you're looking for a very light bubblegum pink i think this is a nice option if you are one that really enjoys like an kind of ombre blush look or kind of mid-tone blushing fading into the under eye i think this is wonderful for that placement now this is a little bit more dry in the pan which i don't fully mind because sometimes i like a little bit more of a powdery blush because i find that they look a lot smoother on the cheeks but you can see here it just takes a little bit more building than the others not necessarily a negative but i would say it kind of is going to come down to preference you do have that option to build it up slowly without kind of getting out of hand but you know that could be a good or bad thing depending i would say the biggest downside to this is actually just the shape of the pan because it's pretty tricky to fit a blush brush in here especially depending on the size and shape so i wish they would kind of change up the size you also do get a lot less product with this than the others but it is also the most inexpensive one here now this one was actually discontinued but if you can still find this i did want to mention it i know with essence products they can kind of come and go quickly but sometimes you still see like older ones at the grocery store so i wanted to include this this is their mosaic blush in the shade berry connection and this isn't even that old it kind of was like here and gone pretty quickly this i actually really like you can see you have um a lot of these like different geometric shapes some of them have more shimmer some of them are more matte and that's kind of how i would describe the um finish of this the color of it see 
neither one is like too pigmented. You see them next to each other, they kind of blur into one another. But you do have that, again, kind of bright pink. I would say all like blurred together, this gives you like, you know, if you swirl all the shades together, it gives you that like really bright, bold pink that a lot of brands have been trying to kind of dupe lately. So this is definitely a tone that's similar to those. One I really love is this one from Burt's Bees. I have mine in the shade Shy Pink. Years ago, I had Toasted Cinnamon. I didn't love it as much when I had Toasted Cinnamon just because, you know, it wasn't a great shade for me. But if you have more of a medium skin tone, I actually think Toasted Cinnamon is beautiful. But Shy Pink is definitely more up my alley and works a bit better for my skin tone. They have a peach one also that I'm a little bit curious to try. Funny enough, these three shades, once swatched next to one another, look incredibly similar. This is just like such a smooth formulation. I really enjoy it. I also have the ColourPop blush formula. This has such a wonderful shade range, like truly probably the best shade range I've seen in a blush. They go from very, very, very pale to extremely deep. They actually make one of the deepest blushes I've ever seen. And I do like this formulation. I have mine in the shade Swirled. Now, this is one of the more expensive ones here. It is tied with this one from Ulta, which is 12. Actually, I think this one from Milani. I think these are all 12. But this one from ColourPop definitely is more on the sheer buildable side. So you're gonna see here with just like one quick swipe, it's definitely not full pigment. Like you can see there's nothing there. So I tend to prefer this because it gives me a little bit more control to build the the pigment up as I see fit but I do like to mention that if you're someone that prefers a lot of immediate pigment this definitely is a bit more of a sheer formulation now if you do prefer a higher pigment level I really enjoy these from Catrice these are my newest blushes and this shade in particular I have been obsessed with this is the air blush or the air matte blush formula so I have Peach Heaven and Spice Space. Peach Heaven is just so beautiful. Now this, oh my gosh, this is so good, you guys. It is like so, so smooth. And you can see out of all the blushes we swatched, like this one has pretty immediate payoff to it. Like you could build that up, but just from one swipe, like you're already getting good pigment. So I find this is one where I have to like tap off my brush to not get like too, too much color. This shade is like such a beautiful, like very desaturated, almost like mauve pink. I don't like this as much on myself, but I think if you have more of a cool undertone, I think this is a really beautiful, cool toned blush. It's funny enough, these are the only two that look different. All the other swatches I did are almost identical, but these two are the ones where you're like, okay, those are actually different colors. Also have this one from Ulta Beauty Collection. This is their mineral blush. I have the shade Southern Sunset. This is definitely like the deepest blush that I have. This one also has like a good level of pigment to it. I think, I mean, obviously this one's gonna show up more than the others because it's just a deeper shade, but I do still find like you could sheer this out if you wanted something a little bit less intense. This blends out beautifully. I really like this formulation and this brand is always on sale. The Milani Rose Powder Blush, I have in a mini. I don't think they still sell the minis, but I, I purchased the mini like years ago from their website. I really like this formula. It's actually so similar in my opinion to the Amazonian clay blushes from Tarte. I have mine in the shade Romantic Rose. This one is like such a beautiful nude shade. Like I think this color in particular matches with just about everything. You can see like the nude versus more of the bright pinks. Like this is just a lot more neutral. I would say it goes with almost every single look. Two baked glowy blushes, starting with this one from Milani. These have been around forever, but this is their super popular shade, Luminoso. Let me swatch this on. Actually, well, I want you to see it against everything else. So we'll swatch it here. So you can see definitely a good level of pigment to it. Very glowy. There are some like glitter particles if you look super close, but I don't think it looks like too artificial on the cheeks. I actually really enjoy this formula a lot, but I do like this one a tiny bit more. This is new from Essence. It's their Pure Nude Baked Blush. I have a hard time opening these. Okay, there we go. So this is the lightest shade. It is called Shimmery Rose. 
this formula it's like similar to the milani but i like it a little bit more so this one you can see also really nice beautiful level of pigment to it definitely is glowy not quite like full-on highlighter-esque but similar level of glow to the milani one i also find that the baked formulation of both of these just looks very very smooth on the skin here are all of the blushes kind of next to one another again a lot of these look similar but i would say out of this bunch the my favorite standouts are these two the air matte and the essence pure nude okay moving into liquid blushes let's start with this one from milani somehow i forgot to include this in my best and worst blushes video i was so bummed but this is the shade luminoso this is a similar formula to the highlight that i shared and this funny enough you're gonna see this against all the other blushes and think wait how is that a blush i asked myself the same thing this is basically a peachy highlight again it has a similar level of like sheerness to it as the other highlight in the same packaging it's just so light to be a blush I've used this a few times like mixed with other blushes to make a different tone and have a little bit more pigment to it, but on its own, it's really more so a highlight. Definitely not my favorite formula. Next, also from Milani, we have the Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush. I have the shade Very Smooth. This, like a lot of the others I'm gonna mention, has um, like a little squeeze tip to it, which can get a bit messy, but it's not a huge deal. Now the shade Very Smooth is definitely a bit um, more bold, but I find this formulation shears out really beautifully. So regardless of your skin tone, I think this color, even on like fair skin, like shears out really nicely. This formula I would say is very, very similar to the Say liquid blushes. So if you're wanting something like that, I find this has that really beautiful dewy finish to it it is similar to this one from flower this is their blush bomb i have the shade bubbly now this texture is a little bit more gel like i have seen a lot of people compare this to the glossier cloud paint though i wouldn't say it's identical by any means because this does have more of that gel texture to it so you can see this shade is like very different for me it is very cool toned almost like lilac and similar really really similar actually to the uh, milani one but i find this a little bit more almost watery it shears out more neither of these have incredible longevity but i find that to be pretty consistent with most blushes that have a really dewy finish to them if you are more concerned about longevity i would direct you towards one of these two this is the nyx sweet cheeks or the makeup revolution super dewy so i have the sweet cheeks in the shade baby doll and this is one of my favorites you do have this like liquid lipstick applicator to it that i i kind of do actually like this color also is just so gorgeous now i don't find this as user friendly as these two because these two more liquidy ones just blend out effortlessly this one i would say you have to work a bit quicker i would say similar things about this one from makeup revolution now this applicator again you do have a bit of a squeeze tube this one i have in the shade you had me at first blush and it is like the most bright pink like look at that it's so pretty i've also used this on my lips before now i don't find this formulation to be dewy i'm not sure why they describe it as that it has a little bit of dew to it now but you'll see in a minute here once it dries down i actually think it looks pretty matte on the skin now for a cream in a pan this is also the cheek kiss line from milani this is the shade coral crush i like this a lot this is like a really waxy consistency almost you can see it shears out really beautifully but it does have good pigment to it right away i think this shade in particular would probably work for a lot of skin tones because it does appear to have a lot of pigment to it. I find it easy to blend out, good wear time, like I really do enjoy it. Okay, do you see, like going back to the Milani blush, this one, the Luminoso blush, like look at it compared to these other ones. This is very much just a highlight, even on my fair skin, like this could almost just be a highlighter. Um, my least favorite is this one from Essence. This is pretty new, it's their What A Tint. Now this is gonna stain, so I'm actually gonna swatch it more on my arm so I can keep filming through without having it like stained on my hand where I'm swatching. But this is like pretty much impossible to blend out in my opinion. I have not able to get this to blend out on the cheeks. 
I've tried it every way possible and I think this only works on the lips. Like I, I would not recommend this if you're buying it for the cheeks, but this is what the initial swatch looks like. I'm gonna give it a second and then kind of wipe it down so you can see the stain that it leaves behind. I do think the stain is pretty and if you're buying it just to use on the lips, I don't think you'll be super disappointed. But if you're wanting like a Benetint dupe that blends out easily on the cheeks, unfortunately, I don't think this is it. Okay, here we are a few minutes later. You can kind of see the stain that it left behind. Um, I do think it stains well, like it's a pretty pink shade, but I would only recommend it on the lips. Okay, moving into brows. I've actually been filming this for a few days now, so that's why the nails are different. I can leave this set linked down below. It's from Glamnetic, but moving into eyebrows let's actually start with this one which is like brand new to me you just saw me use this in a testing new makeup video this is from essence it is their thick and wow fixing brow mascara now the one thing i don't love about this is that it has a really large spoolie too and i actually wish the spoolie was a little bit smaller but i have had a lot of subscribers say that they think this is supposed to be a dupe for the nyx thick it stick it brow and that one apparently has a pretty similar applicator to it so I guess that makes sense. This I do really like, it's pretty high pigment. Uh, the shade that I have this in is Caramel Blonde and I like that it's a really nice taupe. It gives the brows a little bit of hold, a little bit of pigment. I very much enjoy that one. I have a few others from NYX. This is their Fill and Fluff Brow. And this is your Triangular Tip Brow Pencil. I like this, it's a little bit more on the waxy side. What I don't love about this though is instead of a spoolie, you have this paddle. I find that these paddles aren't as ideal for working through the product, but that's okay. I have this in the shade Taupe. There's a swatch of it. It's not too cool toned. I would say it actually has more warmth than some taupe shades, but I do enjoy this. Also from NYX is the um, Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. I really do enjoy this one. It is like a little bit more subtle and I love a brow marker. You can see the strokes definitely look very hair-like. I have mine also in the shade taupe. With this one, I feel like I get pretty good longevity from it. I really, really enjoy this. I will say it is a bit pricey for what it is i also really enjoy the milani weekend brow i find that to be a similar formula at a slightly lower price point this i don't love and you can see there's like a lot of spillover there's some something with the packaging is a bit faulty it probably could use a better um stopper because too much product comes out and then it gets really globby but this is from essence it's the brow like a boss ink brow gel and i was initially expecting this to perform kind of like a brow marker but very much it is not um, i think of this kind of as a brow mascara this applicator you really cannot use to draw brow like strokes like you can see that was me trying to draw something thin but it is still like so pronounced so i would not recommend applying this to the skin whatsoever but if you kind of like dust it over the brows it has phenomenal hold to it so that's kind of the way that i make it work since i do have it but it's definitely not a product i would recommend i also have the brow lift from elf this is not my favorite but i don't really like this type of product this is a pretty spot on dupe to the anastasio beverly hills brow freeze I also don't love brow freeze, but I do think this is a pretty similar formulation. So if you wanted a drugstore alternative, I would recommend this one. Okay, mascaras. I don't keep too many open at a time, but I figured I would at least walk you through what I have at the moment. My newest, this one I have only used twice at this point, but this is from CoverGirl. It is actually their newest mascara. It's called Clean Topia. I have all three of these in the shade brown. This has a very large wand to it, like longer than most. It's a natural bristle brush and the like hourglass shape of this reminds me quite a bit of like Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. This is definitely a subtle mascara from what I have found the two times I've used it. Like my lashes look really pretty and fluttery, but it's definitely on the subtle side, not super dramatic if that's what you're after. This one I find a little bit more dramatic. This is from ColourPop, it's their Level Up. This one was going viral a little while ago. I do enjoy this. Oh, not the hair stuck to it, ew. <laughs> I do enjoy this and I think this is a better brown shade than the other two. I think the other two, even though they're technically described as brown, look more so like a not super pigmented black this i would say smudges a tiny bit but has really nice build to it if you're looking for a dramatic lash i do think this is a good formula and my favorite out of the three is actually the lash and roll from elf i really love this one but 
on its own it's super subtle so if you're looking for a bold mascara you might not love this one this for me i either wear a when i just want a simple minimal lash look or b and this is the main use i have for it is as a final step so i'll take a more dramatic volumizing mascara first and then layer this over top to kind of comb through any clumps lock it into place because i don't get any transfer from this and this is my like final step mascara okay single shadows now i tried to wash those swatches off but the essence one just will not come off so i'm going to try to swatch around it but let's start off i have one of these of course a ColourPop super shock shadow this is in the shade ladybird this is like such a beautiful topper coat like or <laughs> topper shadow it's so beautiful you can wear it on its own or you can top it over something if you like this super glittery look like you will love ladybird also from ColourPop, this is a little bit dried out but this is a jelly mutt shadow that i've had for so long the shade is called big ego it is like fully dried up in here but you can kind of restore it look how pretty that is oh my gosh it's so gorgeous it's like the most intense purple duochrome shot like you see that flip oh my gosh it's so pretty i really really like this shade these two from flower beauty are kind of a similar formula in my opinion these are the chrome crush pressed pigments not quite as like intense and sparkly though as the color pop i think these are even better for every day but they have that similar spongy texture it's kind of hard for me to swatch these now with the nails i should have done these before but you see what i mean it's definitely more subtle than the ColourPop. Like it doesn't have the same amount of sparkle to it, but it has that same spongy consistency. This shade is Jade and the other one that I have is Quartz. Now Quartz actually dried up a little bit on me, so I just kind of like pushed it back in there. And now I think it, you know, it works just fine. These you can really just like push back in. They don't, even when they dry up and crumble, you can still make them work. I would say same thing for the Jelly Mutt shadows. Wow, my hand looks so pretty right now, but this one is from Ulta Beauty. This is the Lustrous Foil Eyeshadow in the shade Silver Leaf. And with this and with any of these, I do recommend if you can try to save this little top piece. I wish I would have saved it on the other ones. They might not have dried out, but this, you see that? It is like so flaky and foiled. And like, if you like it, oh my gosh, do you see that? If you like a flaky eyeshadow, this is the one. Like, look at it on my finger. It's so pretty. Okay, I'm like covered in glitter right now, but let's do another one from Ulta Beauty. This is their bouncy eyeshadow in the shade Sprinkle. This is one I always say, if you like Urban Decay Space Cowboy, you'll probably like this. It's not a dupe, but it's like the same vibe where it doesn't really have a base to it, but you have those like sparkle top coat you know it's like a sparkly shadow it kind of has these reddish pink sparkles it's like it's subtle but it's so beautiful it's also that spongy texture this one from nyx has been around forever but went viral for a bit there this is the shade mermaid and it is like this really subtle duochrome green like it doesn't look subtle here but once you swatch it out you see it's not like too green which i think makes it a bit more approachable if you tend to wear more so neutrals i think it's so beautiful as like an inner corner pop or just like a subtle dual chrome on the lid and if you go in with a light hand and just like tap it in it's not as opaque and then one matte cream this is the elf no budge cream eyeshadow in the shade sand dune texture of this reminds me of a charlotte tilbury eyes to mesmerize but obviously this is matte i do really enjoy this formula if you want just like a one and done shadow or even something to use as a base and then put something over top of i do enjoy these weirdly they have like horrible reviews on ulta but i like the shade that i have okay eyeshadow sticks so i have quite a few from elf but let's start off with one of the oldest of course we have the nyx jumbo eye pencils these are like the original this i have in the shade frosting so there is the swatch of frosting these i like they definitely do crease they don't have like the best wear time but they are the most inexpensive ones i also have these from hard candy that i really enjoy these are the eye def crayons i have the shades bubbly and cold brew these i would say are less like glittery more satin like they feel like super luxe to me like do you see that 
it just looks a little bit more subtle but in a really beautiful intentional way and here's cold brew next to that one i really like pairing those two together and kind of using cold brew more so like an eyeliner and then these are all from elf so we have the no budge eyeshadow stick in champagne crystal this one definitely has like more sparkle particles in it you see it's like definitely a thicker texture than some of the others it doesn't really go on as smooth but like it looks super beautiful on the skin these three are from the cookies and dreams collection they did a while ago so this one is cookie lover it is a brown with sparkles throughout it it's really beautiful and then this white i love using as inner corner this is called sweet cream i love taking that as like a really bright inner corner highlight or even as a base or even as a base for an inner corner highlight. And then if you want an inner corner pop, I think either of these are great for that. This blue is called Chill Zone, and it is like such a fun pastel blue. I've worn this so many times as an inner corner. I think it's so gorgeous for that. And then the mint one from the Mint Collection is called Mint For You. So I really like the e.l.f. Um, matte shadow sticks. I think they're a really good formula also pretty inexpensive actually let's do eyeliners also while we're talking shadow sticks i feel like they're friends and i don't have too too many to be honest but first i have this one that is looking crusty this is from milani it used to have a smudger on the other end but that is missing but the shade is called silver foxy and i used to have a bunch of these from milani they're actually really nice retractable liners you can see it's this silver but it has like sparkles throughout which are really pretty my number one my most used i talk about it all the time is gilded gold from koki so i'm glad that i still have the other shadows on my hands you can kind of see the swatch next to it you can see it has like kind of the same reflection that the other ones do so i find that in the waterline this shade makes your eyes pop so so much like any eye color it's going to make them twinkle and then two for nyx i have the epic wear waterproof liner in white and then i have the vivid brights eyeliner in the shade on red so this white one i got like i bought this last summer when everyone was doing like the little white dots on the eyes and i wanted to try that it's fun it's not like the best formula ever um you can see it's not super um, pigmented you almost have to layer it up but it is a bright white at least and i think it's nice for like doing dots maybe not for doing eyeliner but this they just reformulated these and you can see, do you see that swatched so much better than those it is so much smoother full pigment it doesn't have like it's not skipping it doesn't have any missing spots so the vivid brights these used to be bad but now that they've reformulated i think the formula is phenomenal now we are now into my favorite category which is a lip liner and you can see i have a lot from nyx they make my favorite lip liners so i have six and i'll swatch them all out for you i really like these they're only five dollars like i highly recommend them so first this shade is called mauve there's mauve and then i have ever which i feel like is a really popular shade for them i like ever a lot i use that one really frequently peekaboo neutral which is a pretty much spot on dupe for charlotte tilbury's pillow talk lip liner i use this one often but i tend to like a slightly deeper shade for my lip line so I don't use it too, too much. I mean, I used to be more into this, but I'll show you my favorite ones. My most used is Nude Truffle. It is this like mm, neutral brown, I would say, but like kind of medium. And then Nude Beige is like so similar, but lighter. Like this is very light. I would only recommend Nude Beige if you have a light skin tone really, because this is like basically the color of my lips. Um, but I do, I like this one a lot if you want just like a very simple lip. And then I have Nutmeg and this one I like to use like layered. Like first I'll take Nude Beige and then I'll like add a little bit of Nutmeg if I want to kind of deepen up and make a little bit of a shadow. Or on its own it's pretty if I want like a more bold brown. So these are my top recommendations. I love them so much. I also have some from Essence. So I have the old formula and the new one. So this is an older one. I, this was like my favorite shade ever. I was so sad they discontinued this. This is called Tea Time, but they don't make it anymore. But if you do happen to see it in like your grocery store or something, I highly recommend it. This is just the older formula. But the new ones I do also like. This is the eight hour lip liner now these like have a scent to them it's the weirdest thing like it's this sweet almost floral scent so i have this very light shade this one is called soft beige it is like definitely one of the lightest lip liners that i have and then naive it's like this really beautiful like kind of more bold red i like 
berry red i actually almost never use this shade to be honest not really my favorite but you know if you like a brighter one um my the most underrated okay this is from elf this is called the love triangle lip filler liner i purchased this because amanda z recommended it oh my gosh this is so good you guys it's interesting i would never think i would like a lip liner that has a triangular tip like this but this i wear so often it is like the prettiest neutral brown it's like a little bit lighter you can see but this shade is called light brown okay a classic is milani spice this is like one of my favorite shades but i don't find that this has like as good of staying power as the nyx ones it's like super super creamy like more creamy than you would expect from a pencil like this so i like that in terms of application but sometimes i feel like i apply too much like i do like this but not as much as i like the nyx ones um i have a ColourPop lippy pencil this is okay but i don't use this that much just because the shade you'll see uh, i mean no it's pretty but it's kind of on the lighter side actually why don't i use this to be honest the shade is called little one it's creamy like it's a it's a good formula i just for some reason it's not as big of a standout to me as the others also the lid on this like always falls off you need to like really push it on or you'll lose the lid these if you've been around my channel for a while you re might remember when i was obsessed with these koki lip liners like i've gone through so many of the shade warm nude which i don't actually have right now this is just nude but again these days i like a darker lip liner but when i was more into a lip liner that like totally matched my lip like this is the one i was always using and then i have two bold shades this is true red and this is bright fuchsia so i only obviously use true red if i'm doing a red lip you can see though it's not even like a true red i feel like it has some pink to it for being named a true red this fuchsia one oh my gosh i used to, when i was really into a bold lip which honestly i should bring back i just haven't in a minute but when i was so into wearing a bold lip i would wear this lip liner all the time but out of all of these my number one recommendation is obviously going to be the nyx ones but i also really love the koki ones like if you can find these um, at rite aid or even sally's i would definitely recommend them also like the essence ones Honestly, I think most drugstore lip liners are good. I really want to try the ones from Rimmel now that they're cruelty-free. But as you can see, I have probably more than I need. Let's start with like lip oils, I would say. Slash, well, like lip oils slash lip glosses. We'll do these first. Okay, here we go. So starting off, we'll do NYX Butter Gloss first. I have two shades of this. I have the shades of Fortune Cookie and angel food cake i just did the best and worst of nyx i think i've already probably mentioned that a few times but i can leave it linked down below these honestly not even my favorite from nyx like i think this formulation feels a bit dated in terms of a lip gloss it is a little bit drying i find um definitely sticky like they're not bad for the price point but they're not my favorite i actually think if you're looking for a lip gloss from nyx instead i would recommend either of these two so the this is juice gloss i really like i have the clear shade which is called coconut chill and not only does it like smell incredible like you have that really pungent coconut scent to it but i think it gives this like really plush glossy look to the lips i also really love the fat oil i know this is like super popular right now but for good reason um you can see it has like pretty high level of pigment to it while still having like a really beautiful sheerness at the same time I think this um, formulation wears well. I like the large doe foot that it has. Also, the scent is delicious. Probably my number one like drugstore lip oil slash gloss is this from Milani. This is their fruit fetish. Okay, this smells like smackers or like something from my childhood. You also have that like larger doe foot that I really am into right now. Let me actually share this one next to the NYX and the CoverGirl because I feel like these are the three most popular right now. So let me put all three doe foots next to one another so you can see. Oh no, oh no, I dropped the CoverGirl one onto my white rug. Okay, hopefully that stain will come out. We'll see. Um, but we have NYX, Milani, and CoverGirl. These are the three doe foots. I like that all three have a large one. The CoverGirl one comes to a bit more of a point, whereas the NYX and the Milani are a little bit more rounded. So I have the Milani in the shade Strawberry Melon, and you can see already, it is so much more sheer than the NYX one. The CoverGirl one I have in the shade You're Just Jelly, 
which I would say is kind of similar actually to the Milani one. And you can see both of these have a lot more sheerness, whereas the NYX has a bit more pigment to it, but they all have this like really beautiful gloss to them. My favorite is the Milani, but I think all three are like wonderful like i would recommend all three and covergirl they just came out with new shades of this actually this from essence um you can see the writing is like really worn off this but i do enjoy it this is the extreme shine lip oil and i just have this one in the clear shade i like this as you know just a simple clear lip gloss i feel like it's hard to mess up a clear lip gloss so no complaints on this one really i have another clear one actually from lobby london this is called Plumped AF. It also has that chunky large doe foot to it. This one, I find like the plumping portion of it, you know, it's minimal. It's not going to do too much plumping, but you will feel some slight tingling. Not anything that's unbearable or like really uncomfortable. It's not on the level of like the Too Faced lip injections or anything like that, but I do notice some plumping for, or like some tingling from it. This from Prevents, I love. This is the shade Peach Moscato. This is their lip oil. And I have to be careful because I actually broke. I have like, I don't know, a really strong grip or something because I broke the cap of the other shade that I had of this. But so you're going to see here, this is so different than all the others on my hand. It is much more thin. It is a true oil. So you're either going to love that or hate that. Like if you want this like sticky longevity that you get from a gloss, I would stick with some of these. But if you want like a true hydrating oil that has a little bit of a tint to it, these from Prevents I think are so underrated. You can buy this at Ulta, it's like $8. This is from I Do Care. This is, this is like such an interesting product actually. So it, small little doe foot, it applies kind of light, but then it's pH changing. So you have a little bit of that stain left behind also. So you get this like really juicy popsicle pink lip. I really like this. It's the most expensive out of everything here. It's $12, but I do, I do really enjoy this. And then you have an old school gloss formula. This is the Milani Keep It Full Lip Gloss. Very different than the others. Like this has this like almost milky pigment to it. You can see like so different than any of the others. I mean, maybe kind of similar to the NYX ones, but a much better formula in my opinion. Um, and when I'm saying the NYX ones, I'm referring to the butter glosses, but those are all my glosses slash oils. Next up, these are mostly like lip balms. So two from e.l.f. These are the hydrating um, core lip shines. I have the shade Blissful. These, you know, it's just an average tinted lip balm. These are nice. I think that's like a nice product to have and you definitely don't need to spend a lot on something like this. The other shade that I have is Happy. I wouldn't say these are like the most hydrating ever, but I really like that they have that subtle tint to them. Like if you like a really minimal look, I think you would enjoy these. Also from e.l.f., this is a peach changing lipstick from the American Eagle collection. So it, it looks blue, but it does change color. I don't know how much you're gonna notice it on my hand, but we'll swatch it out though. Yeah, it is already changing. So a lot of pH changing products tend to turn into the same color, but I think this one, because it is blue, it tends to have a little bit more of that purple undertone to it. So if you like that, you'll like this, but just know it definitely has more of that purpley base in it. These from Catrice, I do like, but do you see what happened? Oops, do you see what happened to the cap here? These are the Lip Jam Hydrating Glosses. And again, maybe I just have a great grip, but this cap broke on me like right away. So the shade is called I Like You Very Much. And there's the swatch of it. Basically swatches like clear with a really subtle tint to it. Slightly hydrating. I wouldn't say it's like a huge standout, but I don't, I don't mind it. I think if the cap would not have broken, I would like it a little bit more, but it's not a bad product. These from e.l.f. I really loved, but I think they're being discontinued. These are the Ride or Die Lip Balms. I... My only issue with these is they're like really hard to squeeze out of the tube, especially if it's like winter time and it's kind of dry or like not dry, but cold. They're like so stiff in the tube. This is the shade Boss Berry. I love this one. And then this is Tough Cookie. I also really like this shade. I thought these were so nice. I don't really, I think they're being discontinued. I could be wrong. I hope that, I hope I am wrong because I really do like these. Okay, super underrated. This from Burt's Bees. This is their Lip Shimmer. I have the shade Rhubarb. If you like that like juicy, but like not full pigment red that's been so trendy these last few summers, like this is the perfect product to achieve that with. 
Um, it does have that like tingly Burt's Bees feeling to it, but I really like just the sheerness to the red. Let's do liquid lipsticks next. I don't have too many. First, we have the original, the NYX uh, Soft Matte Lip Cream. I have this in the shade London. I actually use this so often. I think this is just like such a classic shade still. I would highly recommend this. These definitely are a little bit more on the moussey side. They're not transfer proof, but I think they're very comfortable on the lips for being a liquid lipstick. And I think one of the best liquid lipstick formulas at the drugstore, and I mean, you can see, I'm not a huge liquid lipstick person anymore, but I think one of the best formulas is the one from the lip bar. So this is the old packaging, this is the new packaging. I have the shades Hot Mess and Hot Mama. Hot Mama is like this slightly deeper red. It's really, really beautiful. Like. Do you see the amount of pigment to these? Like they just wear so, oh, you see that? Oh my gosh, this is like such a beautiful lipstick. I think the lip bar is so underrated in general, but this I like if you like almost this kind of more neon bright red that, do you see that? Such a unique red shade, but still is that like really beautiful vibrance. These are a little bit on the thinner side, which I appreciate because I don't feel like they feel too heavy in comparison to a few other liquid lipsticks, but you still have that really wonderful opacity and wear time. Highly recommend the lip bar. I tried to wash that off to the best of my ability, but it did stain a little bit, but I think that just shows you how well those wear. But moving into other lip products, first, these are like mostly like bullet lipsticks, but some of them are in stick form. So these are, maybe I could have included these in glosses, but these are the new from Flower Beauty Plump Up Gloss Sticks. And I know everyone was comparing these to the Tarte Juicy Lip Plump because they do come in like the same packaging. I don't think these are that similar to those because the Tarte ones have like full pigment, full opacity. These have a lot more sheerness to them. What I would actually compare these to is the product from Hourglass that comes in the same packaging. I would say this more so dupes that if you're looking for like what it is most similar to. But I have the shade Spicy. See, you can see, definitely more on like the sheer side. You're not getting full pigment, but I kind of like that. And also Toasty. I feel like Toasty is like such a crowd favorite. I hear so many people really love Toasty. I think these are great. They give you a little bit of hydration. They wear well for like what they are. I mean, they don't fade immediately, but they give you a little bit of hydration. Like I think it's a great formula. Also kind of similar, the gloss stick from Ulta Beauty. I really never hear anyone talking about these, but I have the shade Chill Pill. And I purchased this originally because I was wondering if it might be a dupe to the Tarte ones. I'm gonna say no, but I mean, you can see this watch, like so similar to the Flower Beauty ones where you have some pigment, but it's a bit more sheared out, but also like a good amount of gloss to it. I won't say it's as like glossy dewy as the Flower ones, but you do have some of that moisture there. Now the rest are definitely your more traditional lipsticks. So I have two from Milani. First we have the I Am Bold lipsticks. I have the shade I Am Bold, and I think this is the most beautiful pinky red. I wear this a lot, especially with that fuchsia lip liner I shared earlier from Koki. One that I really love, I love the fetish line from Milani. So this shade is called Secret. It is their most popular because it is, uh, well, I don't know if it's the most popular according to the brand, but this is the one I hear the most about because it dupes Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. I think this is such a great formula as like a comfortable matte um let me actually compare this to the elf ones that are new right now the o face lipsticks i have the shade dirty talk and i mentioned in a pretty recent video that i think these are like a little overrated but i mean i think they're good you can see it i'm swatching it in a weird part of my hand but it you can see it has like a nice amount of pigment to it it's definitely hydrating for me though i really like the milani ones the elf ones i think have great packaging but you know, it's just a lipstick. I liked these more, but I think these are being discontinued. These were the Seriously Satin lipsticks, and I have three, Cream, Persimmon, and Nectar, and I will swatch these out. These, it was so funny to me that they called these Seriously Satin because you're gonna see, they're actually quite matte. Cream is like the perfect center of the lips shade. Nectar is like kind of unique for me. It's a more so an orangey nude, which I thought was really fun. And then persimmon, the bright, bright orange. Hard to find an orange that's actually like a true orange, but that one is. And then this one from the lip bar, if you've been around for a while, you might remember when this was like my holy grail lipstick, my favorite. The shade is called Baby Bellini. It is like 
this beautiful warm nude i really enjoy this i think lip bar makes just fantastic lipsticks all right now moving on to lip stains i did bring the essence one back out so i can share it next to these so you can at least see like the color but you heard my thoughts on this earlier but let me just go ahead and swatch it once more this is the what a tint from essence and oops that was out of frame but you can see very watery but really pretty still um I would recommend over that my favorite, the Ulta Beauty Weightless Water Stain. I really love this. I, I've heard some people say like they'll apply it to the cheeks. I don't think it really applies well on the skin, really. I only recommend it for the lips. But you can see a huge different in the color, difference in the colors here. This one is a lot more of like almost an orangey red, whereas the Essence is super duper pink. This I don't think you can get anymore, but I will go ahead and swatch it. This was limited edition and so cute. Ulta, uh, the Ulta Beauty Collection did a collaboration with Steffi Lynn. She's a graphic designer and she like did the packaging for everything. This one you can see again, much more pink, of course, than the other ones. Uh, this from Flower Beauty, I would say, is a really close dupe to the Fenty lip stains. I really, really like these from Flower. You're gonna see so different in terms of application. They like really apply like a lipstick, but you have that beautiful stain left behind. The this is called the Bitten Lip Stain. The shade that I have is Saucy, and I find that this stains really, really well. I also have these two from e.l.f. I have more of a nude shade and then like an orangey red. So Spicy Sienna and then Pinkies Up. Let me do Spicy Sienna first. This has like a really small applicator. You see, it's like an orange, like a burnt orange. I will say though, once this stain is left behind, I tend to pull, it tends to pull like more red. Like there is still the orange undertone, but I don't think it looks as prominent as this like orange on my hand. Um, pinkies up I actually really love using as just a base when I want to make sure my lip combo is gonna stay all day but as you can see it's very light and very nude so I don't think it has the same longevity as some of these other brighter red ones and weirdly enough this stain pulls a lot more pink on the lips than it does look here like here it looks very true nude but on the lips I get a lot more pink as it stains behind I think part of that might just be the shade of my lips, but I do want to mention it. I'm going to let these sit for a minute and then kind of wipe it down so you can see what stain would be left behind. Okay, here's what we're left with after wiping away the stain. You can see like the e.l.f., the nude one is pretty much gone at this point. I also don't think the Essence one has as good of longevity as the other ones. If you want like a super bold stain, I would definitely go with the flower one, but I, I do enjoy all of these to be honest. Palette time. Now my hand is stained from the lip stain, so I'll, I'll do some swatches on my arms for these. I'm not necessarily gonna swatch like every single shade, but I wanna walk you guys through the palettes. We'll start with definitely one of my newest and definitely one of my most used. This is the Milani gilded mini in the shade whiskey business i talk about this so often i use it constantly like i really really love this as like a all matte simple everyday palette i reach for this so frequently i feel like you can see there it's not doesn't have like the highest most intense amount of pigment to it but i think it's really approachable for every day i think it's very user friendly like oh my gosh i reach for this constantly another newer one is this from covergirl this is their clean color palette that they launched earlier this year now these i would say are a little bit overpriced this is around i want to say 12 to 14 dollars and the shimmers are nice like i don't think it's a bad palette i've actually really enjoyed all the looks i've created with this i think the formula is just fine but I think it's a little bit steep, so I would say maybe try to get it on sale if you can. One of the most like intense palettes here is going to be this one. If you want some just unbelievable shimmers, definitely try the Desert Lights palette from Flower Beauty. They have this in two color variations. I have this one that's a lot more neutrals, but they also have one that has some pops in it. Like, wait until you see these swatches. Like, these feel almost like wet to the touch based on how, look at that look at that like you could just, i could just swatch this down my arm and it would never stop like the amount of pigment and shimmer is unbelievable i would say this feels so high-end and luxe like definitely if you like a really bold shimmer you will love this 
I don't find myself reaching for it as much because I tend to prefer my shimmer shades to be a lot more subdued than this, but if this is your style, you're gonna love the formula. Yeah, okay, this did leave a lot of glitter behind on my arm. I have like some micellar water here I'm trying to wipe it off with, but these swatches might all eventually kind of blend into one another. But let me talk about this, which is not an eyeshadow palette, it's actually a face palette from the lip bar. I actually really like this. It's called the Minute, fin <laughs> Minute Finish Face Palette. I have the lightest one, which is called Go Off. And you have bronzer, blush. I really like this blush shade, actually. It's like a really pretty neutral blush. You see the pigment on these? Like, it, this is such an underrated brand, to be honest. I just really love the lip bar. Now, this highlight, I don't think this highlight fits in with the rest of the palette because it's much deeper than these others. Like, this highlight's almost a little too deep for my skin tone. Like, you can see. It's pretty golden, but I really do enjoy this palette. I think it's beautiful if you like an all-in-one face palette like this. Okay, from e.l.f., I just have two at the moment, but I've definitely had more in the past. So this is an older palette. This is the Cookies and Dreams palette. I actually really like this. I compared this to the newer, like, American Eagle one in a video, if you want to, like, kind of see how it compares to that one. I think this is a fun palette if you like some pops of color. I find myself holding on to this, especially for this blue. I really love using that as an inner corner. And I mean, like, look how pretty that blue is. Like, look at the sparkle. I like this. It's just like a fun, different palette to have. I also do have the Mint Melt, which was from another collection. And I do really like the Bite Size palettes. I feel like these have lost some hype. How pretty that is. These used to be so buzzed about, maybe not as much anymore. This formulation on this little mini one was slightly different than the other bite size palettes, but I would definitely recommend the bite size palettes if you want something super affordable. They're $3 a piece. Also some Essence palettes. This one was very limited, but this is their Aerial palette. I really do enjoy this one. These shadows, wait for this. Look at how gorgeous that is. Essence didn't used to have great eyeshadows, to be honest but I feel like this collection was where it really started to turn around and I was like, oh, okay, Essence. And now I'm gonna show you some of my, look at that, look at that. I'm gonna show you some of my other Essence palettes next, but I feel like this was when the formula really started to shift and like, look at those shades. And these little six pans from Essence are so nice. I have I have owned all of them at one point, but I only held on to a few just because I, try to declutter my palettes that I'm not using too much, but I have Dancing Green and Coral Me Maybe. Now I will say, these are $4 and the packaging definitely feels like $4 packaging. I've had a few of them like break on me, like this component. Also, you can definitely see the writing is wearing off, but I, I'm not too worried about that because like I said, they are literally $4, they're $3.99 and it's just like such good shadows. Like look at that. This Coral Me Maybe one, I just think is so beautiful. Also, dancing greens, I will say, like, these two greens are not the easiest to blend out, but you can see, maybe, like, a little patchy, but I find that to often be the case with greens. I think they're good, especially for the price point, even not for the price point. I think that it's similar to a lot of greens that I've tried that are this khaki tone, but, like, look at that. You saw, I barely even, like, dipped my finger in, and then you're just getting so much payoff i think these are such incredible palettes and very underrated i also have a few from ColourPop, starting with lilac you a lot i really do enjoy this palette for like a brighter purple look this shade in particular i feel like has really good pan in it some of these i've had this for a while and so like some of these actually feel a bit dry at this point but I've like really enjoyed this palette over the years. I've had it, like I said, for quite a while. I also have Making Mauves and Blush Crush. Let me actually open these next to one another so you can see. So um, Making Mauves, this shade was broken when I got it, but I just pushed it back in. Since this one is a super shock, it's really easy to just push back into the palette. Blush Crush, I think is really pretty. If you like some more of these like rosy tones, I don't find myself reaching for this one as much. I just, I don't know. I don't like these tones as much. I think Making Mauves is my actual favorite. Um, this, again, feels a little dry. It didn't used to in the pan, but I think just because I've had it for a while. The Super Shock shade in here is like so stunning. I really do like this one. See, I, one thing ColourPop does that I don't love is they have a lot of mattes with shimmers and that's what this is, but you know, I still use it. 
And then I have on the list, which actually is not available anymore. I just looked the other day, but this was only at Ulta for a while there, but it's gone now. I did like this one though. It was like a really fun fall palette. I actually found myself using this quite a bit, like around October, November. I did really like this one. But my favorite, surprisingly, I didn't think I was gonna like this, but I'm really, really, really into Bare Necessities. So let me wash off my arm so I can show you some swatches. Okay, I reach for something out of this palette so frequently, like almost every single day since I've gotten it. I think the shadows are just beautiful. Okay, my arm I think was a little wet still when I swatched those just now from washing it, so I do think if your, your skin is a little damp, swatches show up even more intense, so I do wanna note that, but the formula of this is so good. I feel like I, can take this palette in so many different directions and I have like I've done some very purpley looks with this I've also done some like very cool toned looks very neutral looks very warm looks like you have this nice range of like lighter tones you've got transition shades you've got deepening up shades like I think yes it's a million shadows but I kind of love it and I was thinking that was the rest of the collection but I remembered we haven't talked setting sprays yet. I don't have too many, but I'll just briefly mention them. This one is actually so cool. I've used one of these up fully, but this is the Flower Beauty Jet Set Invisible Powder Spray. Let me see if you can like kind of see on camera. It is like a setting spray powder. It's very interesting. It's nice to keep in your purse if you want to like touch up without having to worry about having a brush and a powder. Um, the Pixie Glow Mist, I'm like almost out of. You can see this is almost empty. I've had this for a while, but this is a really beautiful, super glowy setting spray. Like you have to like a really dewy look for this, but if you do, I recommend it. And then if you're looking for longevity, this is basically a dupe for the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is the ELF Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. Highly recommend. Has a really great mister on it, but also absolutely extends the wear of my makeup. So I actually, I really do enjoy all three of these just for very different purposes, but that was my entire drugstore collection. This has taken me days to film, but I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was as helpful as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.